is your name, please? My name is Agent Gerald Lord Foley. What is your name, please? My name is Adrian Gerald, Lord Foley. What is your name, please? My name is Adrian Gerald, Lord Foley. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Adrian Lord Foley and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, and welcome again to our game of deliberate misrepresentation, in which four presumably smart persons try to figure out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. To tell the truth is brought to you by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. All right now, let's meet our cross-examiner. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. <laughs> now, these three persons all claim to be Adrian Gerald, Lord Foley. Only one, of course, is the real Lord Foley. The others have merely assumed that identity, and they are not required to stick to the truth. The panel in front of you is an affidavit containing lots of facts and no fiction. Will you please follow along with your copies while I read mine? I, Adrian Gerald, Lord Foley, peer of the realm, 8th Baron of Kidderminster, am an Englishman. By profession, I am a songwriter and musician specializing in jazz piano. I have played on three continents and have also made records. My latest American release is an album called Lord Adrian Foley at the piano. My interest in the entertainment industry prompted me to make several speeches in favor of British commercial television before the House of Lords, of which I am a member. As a hobby, I play snooker. Signed, Adrian Gerald, Lord Foley. Now, we'll start the questioning in just about 30 seconds. Three persons all claim to be Lord Foley, jazz pianist. Now remember, only the real Lord Foley is sworn to answer your questions truthfully, and each of you will question until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you'll be asked to record your vote for the one person who, in your opinion, is the real Lord Foley. We'll begin our first questioning period tonight with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number three, it says here that you play snooker. Uh, what position do you play? Well, actually, you don't play in a position. Uh, that's a very hard one to answer. Of course, you bend over when you uh, uh, hit the ball. With the, you have, uh, let's see, it's 15 red balls now, and you have six colored balls and a white cue ball. I get it. Uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, could you tell me what famous British comedy writer changed the laws of the divorce in the British House of Commons? Oh, A.P. Herbert. Number two, where is your ancestral home? I don't have one anymore. Where was it when you had it? It was near Kidderminster. Near Kidderminster. Hi. Uh, <coughs> number one, what is the difference in size between a snooker and a pool table? Well, uh, um, a snooker table is six foot by 12. I think it's slightly larger than your American pool table. Uh -huh. And also, number one, is George Shearing, Shearing an American or a British citizen? I think he's just become an American citizen. Uh, number two, uh, you are Lord Foley, Baron of, uh, Kira Minister. Now, what do your friends call you for short? Well, uh, some of them call me Fofo. What are you who? Fofo. I see. <laughs> number one, you were, you were a songwriter and a musician. What do you think of Elvis Presley? Actually, I try not to think of Elvis Presley. <laughs> <laughs> number one, who's known as the Frank Sinatra of England? Nobody that I've heard of. Polly Bergen. Number two, how did you become a, a member of the House of Lords? Well, actually, I couldn't help it. <laughs> you couldn't help it? You see, my father was one before me. Oh, I see. It sort of goes down. That's right. Or, uh, pardon me, up. Or <laughs> uh, number one, uh, what was the name of, the, uh, of a, one of the foremost jazz pianists who passed away recently? Number three, could you tell me? Do you mean in America? Yes. 
No, I don't think Number I can Number two, could you tell me? One of the foremost... Well, so many, cats. many famous pianists have passed away recently. Hope not too recently. Ralph Bellamy, Ralph, nice to have you back. Thank you, bud. Uh, number one, uh, what is the name of a very colorful labor MP, very popular fellow from uh, the vicinity of London? Very well known. Very, you would uh, you'd be a member of the House of Commons, not of the House that's of Lords. Right, that's right, but I thought perhaps you might... Be well, there are so many colorful members of the House of Commons, <laughs> it's not in my business to know them. All right, what's the uh, competing TV station number one to uh, BBC? Well, that's called the ITA. Yes. Number two, what's a chromatic scale? Oh, it's a scale where the intervals are half tones instead of full tones. Mm -hmm. um, number three, who's the uh, billiard champion, world's champion? Well, the snooker champion is Joe Davis. A billiard. I'm afraid you have me on billiard. Number time. one. I think it's also Joe Davis. Number two. I think it's an Australian, but I just can't remember his name. I think it's Lyndon. Well, that's it, panel. Our time is up, and it's time to vote. So without consultation, will you please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. And don't forget that our team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote, which, of course, means if they fool the entire panel, they get to divide among them the sum of $1,000. All right, panel, have you marked your ballots? Polly's thinking, Polly's thinking. Have you marked? Have you marked? Are you ready, Polly? All right, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two. Why? Uh, because he looks emaciated enough to be a jazz pianist. <laughs> <laughs> a new qualification for a jazz pianist. Ralph, your vote was for... Number two. What? Uh, no, I'm number one. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't get away with that, Ralph. I did it last time. I saw you, and uh, I have it down. You here. do you have, have number one down, so we'll have to kind of disregard it. I hope I can remember the correct count when we come to it. Why, Ralph? Well, uh, to be quite frank, the way they stated their names up there uh, uh, before they came down here to join us, number one seemed to call his name more authoritatively than the others, and he just strikes me as more authentic. Okay. Kitty, your vote was for? Number two. Although he has no more ancestral home, he looks to me like he came from one of the stately homes of England. <laughs> and hi, your vote this time. I voted for number two also. Uh, first of all, I, I noticed that his hands look like that of a pianist. And he also, as Polly said, looks emaciated enough to be the kind of a fellow you'd meet in a pool room. <laughs> a snooker room, please. <laughs> Same thing, but in England. <laughs> All right, there we are. The votes are all in. We've given our reasons, however well you may feel they are qualified. And now let's find out which one of these charming gentlemen is the real British Lord. Will the real Lord Foley please stand up? Thank you very much, sir. Yes, what's your question, please? I'd like to know something. Do you believe that women should be admitted to the House of Lords? Most certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. And as positively, let's find out about the other two gentlemen. Number one, would you tell us who you really are, please? My name is Christopher Morsom. I'm an international public relations man, at the moment open to employment. <laughs> and number three, what about you, sir? My name is Rodney Chalk, and I'm director of radio and television division at the British Information Services. Well, it was certainly our pleasure having you play our game with us tonight, gentlemen. And uh, I can't recall now, I guess we've corrected our score, have we? Is it correct now, the way it stands? Which means that there was only one incorrect vote for a total of $250 from Geritol. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, gentlemen. Good night, and the best of good luck to you. Now may we have our next team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Commander James F. Calvert. What is your name, please? My name is Commander James F. Calvert. What is your name, please? My name is Commander James F. Calvin. 
All right, panel, once again, will you follow along as I read you this copy of this affidavit? I, Commander James F. Calvert, graduated from the United States Naval Academy in June of 1942. Since then, my entire Navy career has been in the submarine service. During World War II, I made eight war patrols aboard the submarine Jack. During these operations, we sank 15 Japanese ships. After a period of duty as commanding officer of the USS Trigger, I was assigned to the Atomic Energy Commission, and in November of 1956, I received orders designating me as commanding officer of the USS Skate, the Navy's newest atomic submarine. Signed, Commander James F. Calvert. Well, it's time once again to play our game. Now, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Commander James F. Calvert of the atomic submarine Skate. And remember once again that only the real Commander Calvert is required to answer your questions truthfully. We'll begin this round with Polly Bergen. Polly? Number one, isn't it true that you can be arrested for impersonating an officer? <laughs> well, that's what I told these two gentlemen here. <laughs> Uh, number two, um, could you tell me what is the equivalent of your rank in the Army? It's uh, a command... Uh, I have to think of the Army rank, if you don't mind. Let's see. Number two, could you tell me? Yes, I think Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, number three, what do you say? That's correct, Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, number three, could you tell me who invented the aqualung used by frogmen? Frankly, no. Uh, Ralph? Uh, number uh, one, who was the first head of the Atomic Energy Commission? Well, presently it's Admiral Straws. Rickover is the real, real head of the Atomic Energy Commission, the starter of it. Actually. Number two, who, who was the first head of the Atomic Energy Commission? Number three, can you answer? I don't know it's the first, but I would say Leslie Groves, General Groves. Um, number one, um, What's the, uh, what's the greatest distance a submarine has traveled without refueling? Well, the old type submarines? No, the new one. Well, that's classified information. Kitty? I read it. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, you're a commander now. If you got a promotion, what would you be? Very surprised. <laughs> I guess I presume that I just got this promotion the last one is two months ago. But if I were promoted, I would be a captain. A captain. Yes. Number two, what was, what was the name of the first atomic submarine? The Nautilus. Who designed it, number one? Uh, Rickover had a lot to do with it. Tell me, number three, what happens if a man suddenly gets claustrophobia on a submarine? And just has to sit and grin and bear it. There's no place to go. <laughs> Hi. Uh, number one, what is the, the cost of a torpedo? I really don't know. I know a lot about a torpedo, but I don't know the cost, actually. Number one, do you, uh, does the name Squalus mean anything to you? Squalus was one of our uh, submarines during the World War II, I know. Uh, number three, uh, does the name Squalus mean anything to you? Yes, I believe it was a British submarine. That was and number two, how about you? Yes, it was uh, an American submarine that was sunk uh, uh, in peacetime operations. Uh, uh, number uh, two, who invented the submarine? Polly? I don't really know the answer. Polly? Jules Verne. Uh, number... Th <laughs> Jules Verne? <laughs> <laughs> well, he did. <laughs> number three, uh, could you tell... Go ahead, quickly, come on, hurry up, hurry up. You scared it right out of me. Well, then the time is gone, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> The time has gone, the walrus said, to talk of the chambered Nautilus. Again, it's time to vote. And so, with no consultation, will you mark your ballots now, panel, and select number one, number two, or number three. All marked? Polly, you ready? All right, for whom did you vote this time? Number two. Number two. Why? 
Because he doesn't look emaciated enough to be a jazz pianist. <laughs> Good sound, Reed. Michael. <laughs> Ralph, how about you? Number two. And your reason? Well, um, I don't know. It's pretty much of a guess, but I think he uh, seems to have more ready information than the others. Kitty, your vote? Number two. Well, <laughs> why? Well, the man I'd most like to be cooped up with on a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> And hi, Gardner, who was your vote for? Number two, but for a very different reason. What was your, what was your reason? Uh, number two knew the, the squalus sank during peacetime. I don't think any man commanding a submarine would not have that knowledge. Huh? Okay, there you have our rhymes and our reasons. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope yours are as sound. We'll find out now which of these three gentlemen is the real submarine commander. Will the real Commander Calvert please stand up? Thank you, sir. They all feel pretty smug right now, don't they? Polly, what do you want? Uh, we would like a few minutes to discuss a raise for next week's show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have another battle in no time flat. All right, let's find out about the others now, distinguished gentlemen. Number one, about you, sir. What do you do and who are you, really? Uh, my name is Richard Stark. I'm an advertising executive with American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> my name is Kenneth. Number three. My name is Kenneth Beresack. I'm a casualty underwriter with the Royal Globe Insurance Group. Oh. Yeah, I tell you, it's always a pleasure to have such fun with such distinguished gentlemen. And uh, even though they scored 100% here, you don't go away empty-handed. It will be $150 from Jared Hall for you gentlemen. Thank you very much for giving us your time tonight. Hope you had as good a time as we did. Good night and good luck. Now, may we have our third team of challenges, please. What is your name, please? My name is Joe McCubbin. What is your name, please? My name is Joe McCubbin. What is your name, please? My name is Joe McCubbin. Third affidavit panel, get set to follow along on your copies, if you will. I, Joe McCubbins, am married and the mother of two children. My husband and I operate a dog boarding kennel, and I am a professional poodle clipper. My hobby is hunting with the bow and arrow, which is not surprising in view of the fact that in Colorado Springs last July, I became the women's national field archery champion. Signed, Joe McCubbins. Now, we'll start our cross-examination in just a minute. Joe McCubbins, women's national field archery champion. Let's begin our questioning this round with uh, our welcoming back, Ralph Bellamy. Ralph? Uh, number one, um, what is the meaning of the term crossbow? Crossbow? Uh, a crossbow is made more like a gun, and it's pulled with a trigger. Um, you've spent some time in Colorado Springs. I don't know whether you live there or not. Uh, what's the name of the uh, famous resort hotel there? I really don't know. Number two, what is the name of the famous? Broadmoor. Broadmoor. Um, number three, um, where is the Garden of the Gods? Well, it's, it's in Colorado Springs, but... Number two, uh... Sorry, that's all the time we have. It's probably near the Elysian Field. Kitty? <laughs> Number three, how do you clip a poodle? How do you? Mm. By appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Helps when you're busy, believe me. <laughs> Number two, are poodles temperamental? Yes, they are, very. Number one, do they ever get homesick when they're boarding with you? Yes. How do you deal with this, Number three. Well, you don't. I mean, you talk to them, you know, and... Keep them from getting bored. <laughs> Number two, what do you bag with your bow and arrow? What kind of quarry? Deer and small game. Hi. Number one, what is the name of the most famous of all poodles? I really don't know. Number two, do you know? 
No, I really don't. Whatever happened, number two, whatever happened to a poodle named Masterpiece? It was winner of the Westminster Dog Show, I believe. Yes, do you know, number three, what happened to Masterpiece? Well, I know he did a lot of impersonations. <laughs> I don't know. Uh -huh. Number two, uh, how much do you get for giving a poodle a haircut? <laughs> Fifteen dollars. Number, number three, how much do you get? I get seven fifty. And how much do you get, number one? Six. Would you say you were wearing a Dutch cut right now? <laughs> is, that, is that a Dutch cut you're wearing? No. Is it similar to a Dutch cut in a poodle? No. What is she wearing? Oh, all right. <laughs> Polly? Uh, number one, um, how much did you say you charged? Six dollars. What do you do for that? Well, you bathe them and uh, clip them and perfume. What kind of perfume do you use? Kennel number five. Kennel number five? <laughs> uh, number two, what is, the, uh, what is the height limit for a toy poodle? What is the height number? The height limit. The height limit. For That's right. For, For a, a toy. toy. Oh, about two and eight inches, I think. Time's up, panel. Time to vote once again. So please, don't look at me like that, Polly. I didn't Polly. hear her. <laughs> about two and eight inches. About two and eight inches. Two what? Two uh, feet. Eight two eight feet, eight inches. inches. Uh -huh. Two feet in the front, two feet in the back, <laughs> and eight inches to boot. All right, mark your ballots now and select number one. Number two. Or number three. Ballots all marked. Holly, are you ready? Set. Go. Whom did you vote? Number three. Why? Uh, well, because number two didn't know um, of the height limit, which is ten inches, and number three seemed to at least recognize the name Masterpiece, which is the name of my dog's mother. <laughs> Her father, I forget. <laughs> Well, <laughs> number two. For number two. And your reason? Well, uh, I guess the, the opposite of knowledge. Uh, <laughs> I thought number two knew more about it. There you are. Kitty Carlisle. Number two. Uh-huh. Mine has nothing to do with poodles. She just looked like a modern-day Diana to me. <laughs> and hi, Gardner. I voted for number three. Because number one didn't know that she has got a poodle cut, and the prevailing price is six or seven dollars, and you look a little bit like a poodle, number three. <laughs> oh. All right, there we go now. Let's see how well you folks have done. If you're voting at home, and we trust you are, we're going to find out right now which of these ladies is the real National Women's Field Archery Champion. So will the real Joe McCubbins please stand up? <laughs> It went to your head. Number two, who are you really and what do you do? My name is Joan Ewers. I'm with the New York Times and the Classified Advertising Department. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Miss Poodle Cut of 1957, who are you really? My name is Joan Pierce, and I'm a dental assistant for Dr. Harold Cantor. <laughs> oh, boy. I wish there were time to find out about the impersonations that this dog masterpiece did. I want to find out about that. But in any event, you scored a clean sweep there, and that means $1,000 from Geritol for you lovely ladies. Good night, and the best of good luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for tonight, so good night, panel. Good night, good night uh, And good night to all of you. And please don't forget what I told you about Geritol, America's number one tonic. And now this is Bud Collier saying good night and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Transportation for To Tell the Truth was arranged by American Airlines. Guests are flown to New York aboard America's famous luxury flight, the DC-7 Mercury. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Archery equipment courtesy of Abercrombie and Fitch.